Hi, today we will be discussing how to give a good speech or presentation. Today we're going to improve your confidence and your ability to present, understand important aspects of speaking, and learn what power words are. The first topic we'll cover today is stage presence. Although you might not realize it, your demeanor plays a large role in your effect on your audience and can actually determine whether an audience listens to you or is persuaded by your argument. The first big aspect of stage presence has to do with the way you stand and your eye contact. When most people get nervous, they're tempted to slouch and look down. But no matter how nervous you are, you need to project confidence. Take a deep breath and roll your shoulders back three times. The posture you have right now is exactly what needs to be on stage. For eye contact, professional speakers glance across the room often and constantly make eye contact with different people. For a beginning speaker, this can feel intimidating. So I would suggest looking around the room at different areas of the walls. And this might calm your nerves if you're anxious as well. Remember, you're trying to connect with your audience. Next, where do you stand? When you're nervous, it's really easy to stand statue still, mumble all of your words, and run like there's no tomorrow. But when you're giving a presentation, get comfortable with the stage and move around a little bit. No one wants to listen to a statue. But a lot of people feel uncomfortable walking around because you don't want to look like you're dancing in the middle of your presentation. So now, let's talk about how to move, because knowing this can put your mind at ease by providing structure and mental comfort. The first slide about moving has to do with speeches. Speeches are typically organized in a three-point thesis format. However, even if you're doing a cause and effect speech, consider each cause a point while following this movement pattern. For the thesis and introduction paragraph, stand in the center of the stage and balance your weight equally on both feet. This might make you feel a little bit exposed at first. The audience sees this as a power pose. It lets them know that you're about to say something that matters. For your first, second, and third points, you need to move side to side on the stage. This gives the audience a visual transition between idea transitions, which helps keep them engaged and motivated with your presentation. Lastly, we have the conclusion, and make sure you go back to your power pose for that one as well. Now let's transition to PowerPoints. If you're presenting a PowerPoint, walking across your screen would completely defeat the purpose of using a PowerPoint in the first place. Instead, shift your weight or take smaller steps on your side of the screen for each point. Again, at the conclusion, return to your power pose. This brings me to an important point. Don't read off the screen or else you're gonna look really weird hunched over reading off of it. Speak to your audience. After all, your slide presentation is just a prop, not your main source of information. Next, where do you put your hands? Never put your hands on the podium, in your pockets, or with your palms facing you. Remember, you need to present the illusion of confidence. One thing that people often do is leave their hands at their side, which is perfectly okay. But something that's really good to do is to occasionally turn your palms outwards towards the audience in an embrace, as this symbolizes unity and helps them stay engaged with the presentation and makes them pay more attention to what you're saying. Now, let's talk about clarity. How do you sound to your audience? The good news is you don't have to change your voice. Just follow a few quick tips. Imagine you're speaking to a larger audience because this way you'll naturally enunciate. Don't shout though, but don't be extremely quiet either and project your voice to everyone in the room. Also, be confident in your ability to succeed. Just take a deep breath and plan what you say so that you don't stumble over your words. Also, avoid distracting speech filters like um or uh, as they detract from the quality of your presentation and can sometimes hinder the audience from listening to you as they believe that you are a weak speaker. This is an important thing to remember. Don't speak with force, but speak with deliberation and with purpose. Every word in your presentation has a meaning and is helping you progress through ideas. So don't regard any one word as unimportant and make sure you recognize the importance of each one so that you speak clearly and it sounds like you have direction with your words. Hopefully, you now understand how to present, but now you might be asking, how do I write my presentation in the first place? For people struggling with this, here's a quick set of steps. First, find a topic. This can either be assigned to you by a teacher or whoever is in charge of you, 
or a passion project which you'll probably do in older grade levels. Next, find information and organize your ideas. By finding information, you can seem more credible to your audience and answer questions with ease. Additionally, you would likely seem more knowledgeable once you have more information on a topic. Organizing your ideas helps them have a logical flow and sequence, helping your audience to keep up with you and transition with ideas as you go throughout your presentation or speech. Next, you're going to actually write your presentation, so it'll be easier for you to remember things while you speak or during your presentation. When you write, try to add in power words. We'll discuss those later on in the presentation, but be sure to keep them in mind. Before talking about the last step, let's talk about different aspects of this process. For the finding information and organizing it, there are two main structures you can use, cause and effect and three-point thesis. In a cause and effect presentation or speech, you discuss stimuluses and effects of them. This is typically useful for persuasive presentations, especially if you are trying to show someone the positive effects of a change. The three-point thesis, or even more point thesis, is typically preferred by older grade level teachers, and these ones are more informative. Basically, there's an introduction, three points, and then a conclusion. Sometimes, if you're doing a slide presentation, it will have more than three points, and that's perfectly okay. This is simple and great for beginners. Now, let's talk about power words. These are essentially words which inspire specific feelings in your audience. And here are some examples of them, which are not limited to, but include these. It's good to use these as this can help your audience really connect with you and can make them feel empowered and true to your presentation. One really common word which is used as a power word is the word we, and it's commonly used by professional speakers as well. It causes the feeling of unity to emerge within the audience, and they feel responsibility towards your presentation as they are a part of something bigger than themselves. Another thing to keep in mind while writing your presentation or speech is to use transition words. Transition words are basically just words that help you transition between ideas, and they can be really useful to help your audience understand the logical flow of your ideas and to help them understand the relation between them. Some examples of different transitions include when you're adding new information, transitioning to a new idea, describing a cause and effect, or describing a summary. All of your ideas should fit together like pieces of a puzzle, and transition words can really help you do this. Now we have the last step, practice presentations. Take these practices very seriously, and maybe even present to a friend for feedback. You might not think you're gonna be nervous now, but you never know what's gonna happen on the day of. Basically, the main idea of this presentation is that writing presentations and speeches is going to be a huge part of your life throughout middle school, high school, college, and even your professional life. Developing these skills early on will prove to be exceedingly beneficial, and no matter how good you are now, it never hurts to improve. For those of you interested in further learning, this is a great website which provides examples of different speech structures and interesting aspects of speeches which are a little bit more advanced. I would suggest looking at this, especially if you're interested in this or have to give a presentation soon. If you still get nervous before speaking and have a presentation coming up soon, this website has great information on different characteristics to boost your confidence. Younger students especially tend to fill up slides with huge paragraphs of information, but as you get older, it's going to be more bullet points and more speaking on your part. This website is a great way to get started doing that so you can give more professional presentations. Good luck with your future speeches or presentations, and thank you so much for listening.